Get ready as Apostle Joshua Selman takes us on a journey. Prepare your heart for a mighty visitation. With Jesus' joy, let us welcome Apostle Joshua Selman. Here, here's your prayer point for this week. Go and pray. Father, touch the heart of man for my sake. I have taught you Numbers chapter 1 and verse 5. These are the names of the people who shall stand with you. Who shall stand with you. Who shall stand with you. Not everybody stands with you. The Jesus you love so much, there are people who despise him because their hearts have not been touched. It is amazing how you can be a champion to someone and you can be bilial to another person depending on whose heart God has touched. So don't be surprised when people despise you while others are celebrating you. I think it's something preachers are having a hard time to understand. How could somebody celebrate you, honor you, love you, serve that grace, and then another person despises you so harshly, unfortunately. It is not every man whose heart has been touched for you. It is your assignment as a man of God to say, Lord, all that you have given me, touch their heart. Don't make a mistake of thinking that as congregants sit down and look at you as a man of God, they are truly connected. If God does not touch their heart, they can be with you for 10 years and one day they will say crucify him and go to bed while you are on the cross. Did you hear what I said? Pray for everybody in your house, house help, security people, whatever. God touch their heart. If not the day somebody comes to say, look, oh, can you help me and kill this man? Ask Judas. Judas was with Jesus, but his heart was not touched. You need to pray. Leaders, pray for everybody within your circle. Those who play pivotal role, God touch them, touch their hearts. Let them be loyal indeed, committed indeed. Spouses, pray for yourselves one for another so that there's no falsehood and deception. Pray for yourself. Give us that scripture again. Saul also went home to Gibeah and there went with him a band of valiant men. Men whose hearts God has touched. Your destiny helper comes under this category. Are we together? Have you read a very interesting story in the Bible? We're about to pray. That story is found, I think in Luke chapter, is it Luke chapter 10? From verse 29 to 36 just write it for reference Luke chapter 10 is the story of a man called the Samaritan have you heard the story of the good Samaritan so I will quote it quickly for time the Bible tells us that there was this man read verse 30 Jesus now is explaining that there was a certain man who went down from Jerusalem to Jericho he fell among thieves please look up and they stripped him of his garment they wounded him and they departed leaving him half dead everybody say half dead and there were three people who were who came to the life of that man the most likely people did not help him number one was a priest the priest came when you read the verses a priest came and saw him and went away as if he did not see anything number two a levite came people of consecration came and saw him and passed on but then number three a man whose heart god had touched the bible said a certain samaritan when he saw him he had compassion upon him and what did he do in response to the compassion 34 he bound his wounds he poured oil he poured wine he set him on his own donkey he brought him to a hotel and took care of him and he went further verse 35 to leave an instruction he said he took two pens and gave the hotel host and said take care of him and whatever else you spend i will come back and repay you man whose heart god has touched they will pay your rent last year and come this year again and say, are you stable now? You say, not yet, sir. And say, don't worry, I will still pay it. Men whose heart God has touched. Who needs those kind of people? Men whose heart. I'm about to pray that prayer for you. Men whose heart. I've seen a few of these kinds of people in my life. And in all fairness, most of you, if not all of you are here because this happened to you. You need these kinds of people in your life. 
else as a man of God you will walk alone as a leader you will walk alone as a businessman you will walk alone or you will be surrounded by psychophants to a point where you will live in fear everybody is answering yes sir but the truth is that their hearts have not been touched they will sell you for 30 shekels they will sell you for anything at all Judas even the brothers of Joseph they were not touched even though they were his brothers when an opportunity came they sold him cheaply it takes beyond proximity for connection to happen God must touch the heart of a man maybe we should start with that prayer we'll start with this prayer and then connect to others whilst you are seated Lord touch the heart of my helpers in this season touch the heart of anyone and everyone who is part of your prophetic program for me whilst you are seated make sure you pray outside pray businessmen pray maybe this is the miracle you came to church to receive lord touch the heart of someone where is the good samaritan who must show me kindness where is the good samaritan who will make prophecy happen in my life where is that helping ministry that helping business mama pray for your children where is the helper that god has positioned to lift my children some of them are in a foreign land void of help lord send to my life send to my family send to my ministry sent to my home sent to my job sent to my destiny the man whose heart God has touched someone take a minute to pray you are investing in your destiny this is a school of prayer God answers prayer by sending men God answers prayers by releasing graces supernatural endowments that command physical results physical testimonies God answers prayers by granting you access to supernatural experiences. Someone pray. The final arrival of all answer to prayers is the arrival of men. They come with the gifts they carry. They come with glad tidings. They come with physical things. They come with goodness. They come with mercy. Men are an expression of God's goodness. Men are an expression of God's mercy. Men are an expression of God's prosperity. Your wealth is in the hands of men. Your favor is in the hands of men. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and pray. The land you will build on is currently in the hand of some man. God needs to help you. If God does not touch the heart of men, you will live a defeated life. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. In this season, oh God, I receive answers to prayer. If it's a healing, cry for a supernatural manifestation. Let that cancer die. Let that deliverance be perfected. Let this recurrent ill health give way once and for all. Let this blood condition go. It is within your power to heal me and to heal me now. Heal me, O oh God, and I will be healed. Save me and I shall be saved. Now go ahead and pray. The resources of wisdom, the resources of favor, the resources of direction, the resources of power, the resources of the anointing, the resources of honor, let it rest upon me drawing to my life physical testimonies testimonies of abundance and increase believers are praying two or three more minutes go ahead and pray oh, my help has come oh has come oh, oh, oh my lifting has come oh, 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 oh my help has come oh, oh,
of Jesus listen to me it is impossible to have your prayer life go down when you understand these things that this is a treasure that is hidden in a life of prayer that every time I commit to prayer I give God an opportunity to reveal his glory through my life imagine the things we miss when we do not pray and imagine the things we miss when we pray without understanding. Imagine the things we miss when we pray are miss. That prayer is predicated upon the fact that your will needs to be active for your destiny and God's purposes through you to be actualized. He made it so. He gave you that gift and that gift had placed a mandate upon your life that you must always communicate your needs communicate your needs no assumption no presumption and I've taught you tonight that there are various assignments to prayer your growth and transformation obtaining requests in the place of prayer making decrees establishing spiritual realities I also taught you that the final assignment of prayer is for warfare and intercession I've taught you various prayer models. Make sure you take advantage of them. That you can pray in the spirit. Building up yourself on your most holy faith. Consistently growing. Molting yourself to a more powerful version. Are we together now? That you can pray declaring faith-filled declaration of scriptures. You can pray the prayer of inquiry. You can pray warfare. Warfare prayer. And you can pray with thanksgiving. As the tool for receiving now I've taught you finally that when God answers prayers these are the three channels for its manifestation number one God answers prayers by giving you supernatural manifestations like a healing miracle like a deliverance are we together supernatural it is instant and yet even though it's from the spirit you can have a physical expression and then that God releases graces in answer to prayer graces of wisdom graces of favor graces of power graces of understanding graces of direction graces of honor when you carry these graces the graces have a mandate to draw forth physical circumstances physical experiences that translate to your testimony and that the final arrival of every answered prayer is through the ministry of men they come in response to what you are carrying on your head they come in response to something God has placed upon your life. And that for that to happen, God must touch their heart. Men can be aware of your need, but it does not mean they will respond to it. These are the men whose heart God has touched. Who has learned tonight? Go back and listen to this message. Go back and meditate upon this. Meditate upon this until your prayer life becomes richer and becomes fuller I'll ask you to pray one prayer and then I speak over your life father everything that has killed my prayer life I command it out of my destiny fan my prayer life back to life I need to be a believer with power a believer with results I intend to gain mastery in the place of prayer someone pray someone pray take a minute to pray prayer that translates to your prosperity to your advancement, to your empowerment, consistent unending results by the Spirit. You are taking a minute to pray. Fan back the ambers of prayer. Fan back your altar in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Let me speak over you now. In the name that is above all names, I pray for someone. The encounters you lost as a result of the decline of your prayer life may it resume tonight 
the supernatural encounters that brought you direction that made your future predictable you knew things before they happened you walked with certainty and accuracy but you lost it as a result of a loss in your prayer life like the hair of samson i pray for a restoration tonight 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 the grace to pray in the spirit and to pray consistently receive it right now the grace to consistently make faith-filled declarations. Receive that grace right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you the discipline and the patience to pray the prayer of inquiry till you find direction for your life and destiny. I declare, receive it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit, the discipline and the discernment to engage warfare and intercession if and when the need arises receive the grace in the name of Jesus receive the grace in the name of Jesus and now I pray for everyone here who is sick in your body you are in need of a touch supernaturally may God answer that prayer now may God answer that desire now that you will walk out of this place healed you will walk out of this place delivered brand new organs to your body in the name of Jesus I pray for you every grace every spiritual resource that needs to land on your head and to begin to attract strange testimonies to your life whether it is wisdom receive it be it favor receive it be it honor receive it be it understanding receive it in the name of Jesus Christ final prayer point I don't know whose heart God needs to touch this night I don't know who God needs to wake from sleep for your sake, for your sake, not to punish them, not to be evil towards them, but for your sake, that God will wake them like he woke Ahasuerus and cause them to open the book of remembrance. I pray for you. May God touch the heart of someone for your sake. May God touch the heart of a gatekeeper for your sake. May God touch the heart of your boss for your sake. May God touch the heart of a man of God for your sake. May God touch the heart of a wealthy and established man for your sake. In the name of Jesus Christ. My final prayer is that every spirit that has been assigned to attack your prayer life, attack your word study life, and make what you have heard tonight profitless and of none effect, I decree and declare, that those spirits are banished from your habitation. Banished from your habitation. In the name of Jesus. Maximizing your destiny. A call to fulfill God's purpose. Beloved. Today we gather as young adults who are not only full of potential but also anointed and appointed for a divine purpose. The world is filled with distractions, challenges, and uncertainties. But the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Psalm 119, 105. Our focus today is on maximizing the destiny that God has entrusted to each of us. We are going to explore how we can live out our purpose and fulfill our divine calling. Number 1. Understanding Destiny in God's Kingdom Before we can maximize our destiny, we must first understand what it means in the context of God's kingdom. Destiny is not just about personal success or achieving worldly goals. It's about aligning our lives with God's will and purpose. Jeremiah 29:11 reminds us, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. This scripture highlights that our destiny is God-ordained. It's not something we create, but something we discover as we walk closely with Him. Number 2. Embracing your identity in Christ. To maximize your destiny, you must embrace your identity in Christ. The world will try to define you by your past, your failures, or even by the standards of success it upholds. But in Christ, you are a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Your identity is not based on what you do, but on who you are in Christ. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. 
This means that God has already prepared a path for you to walk in, one that is filled with purpose and meaning. Number 3. Seeking God's Will Through Prayer and the Word Maximizing your destiny requires a deep and consistent relationship with God. Proverbs 3 5 Tark 6 advises us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your paths straight. Prayer is the vehicle through which we communicate with God, and the Bible is the roadmap for our journey. When you spend time in prayer and in the Word, you align your heart with God's will and gain the wisdom needed to make decisions that are in line with your divine purpose. Number 4. Overcoming Obstacles with Faith and Perseverance Every destiny comes with its challenges, but with faith and perseverance, you can overcome them. James 1 2, 4 encourages us, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. The obstacles you face are not meant to break you but to build you. They are tools in God's hands to mold your character and strengthen your resolve. Number 5. Surrounding Yourself with Godly Counsel One of the keys to maximizing your destiny is to surround yourself with people who will encourage, challenge, and support you in your walk with Christ. Proverbs 13.20 says, Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. The company you keep can either propel you toward your destiny or pull you away from it. Seek out mentors, friends, and leaders who will speak life into you and guide you according to the Word of God. Number 6. Serving Others as an Expression of God's Love Our destiny is never solely about ourselves. It's about impacting others for the Kingdom of God. Jesus Himself said in Matthew 20:28. 20, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give His life as a ransom for many. One of the greatest ways to maximize your destiny is to serve others. When you use your gifts, talents, and resources to bless others, you reflect the love of Christ and fulfill the purpose for which you were created. Number 7. Staying Focused on the Eternal Perspective As young adults, it's easy to get caught up in the pursuit of temporal success, career achievements, financial stability, or personal accomplishments. However, maximizing your destiny means keeping your eyes on eternity. Colossians 3 verse 2 instructs us, Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. When you live with an eternal perspective, you make decisions that have lasting value. You invest in relationships, character, and the advancement of God's kingdom rather than in things that will eventually fade away. Number 8. Walking in Obedience and Faithfulness Finally, to maximize your destiny, you must walk in obedience and faithfulness to God's calling. Luke 16 verse 10 says, Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. God looks at our faithfulness in the small things before He entrusts us with greater responsibilities. Obedience is not always easy, but it is necessary. When God calls you to step out in faith, do so knowing that He will equip you for the task and reward your obedience. Conclusion. Beloved, the time to maximize your destiny is now. God has placed you in this generation for a reason. You are here to make a difference, to shine His light in a world that desperately needs it. Don't settle for anything less than God's best for your life. Remember that your destiny is not about achieving worldly success, but about fulfilling God's purpose for your life. As you leave today, let the words of Paul in Philippians 3 verse 13 to 14 resonate in your heart. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Press on, beloved. Maximize your destiny and let your life be a testament to the power and glory of God. Amen. Please don't hesitate to like and share our contents. You can follow us on all of our social media platforms at Believers Global TV. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.